Can you just um, give us a synth up there? One? I'll describe myself as a passion-driven person. I'm that type of guy that will always initiate something and I want to go for it and will try for it, you know. I'm, I'm the type of guy to bring people to themselves. People call me the energies guy, you know, the chakras guy. Uh, where I'm from is in Pumalang and Klipek. And a person who's made it in Middleburg is seen as, you know, those, those engineers. You know, because it's a mining town. So being an engineer, being a technician, whatever, you're seen as, well, you're actually something, you know. A company took me and then I studied to be an artisan and I worked in the mines for like a, a year until one fateful day I got electrocuted underground and I nearly died. And that was an eye opener for me. I was like, okay, I'm 19 years old. I'm not gonna try and do this to, you know, until I die. So let me go, go study it. And as I was studying it, I got to Gauteng, and this is when I see, okay, it's actually possible being inside this mysterious box that we see it as a mystery. You don't know how people get inside the box. So I'm like, this is a possibility. I can show up there, is what you're saying to me? And then they're like, yeah, yeah, you can. You know, you can model. You look like you can. You're the type. Do you want to try it? I'm like, okay, let me try it. And when I tried it, I saw myself getting into a space where I became me in a way, in a sense, you know, this is what I want to do. I remember my mom once told me, she's like, you know when you were young, you used to want to be in that box? And I was like, really? I'm like, really, is this what's happening? And she's like, you know, you were meant for this, so this is me. As I was in Pretoria at the time, like I was doing my practicals, right, my P1, P2. And my first month, I remember I was just hustling, man. I was, I was lecturing at TUT uh, while I'm doing my practicals, while I'm club promoting, while I'm trying to do this modeling thing, just so I can make up finance that I can put away, so I can do my big move the next year to Joburg. I remember living off of like oats, I and mean, I remember losing so much weight, and I'm telling myself, yo, I can't do this. It's like milling your car, man, you like, it's cut. Like, I'm about to call my, my dad, yeah, bo. And then there's this audition from Pretoria to Joburg. And I got here, and I remember, man, I was like, just so down going there, dude. I was like, this is the lot, this is it, bro. After this, if I don't, not even a call back, I'm out. And then I got the call back, and then I got the job, and I was like, what? This is amazing. When I was doing the commercials, I'd be like, okay, let me do as many as I can, firstly, to make me comfortable financially. Because in commercials, you find the sweet spot. Like, you'd, you'd get an actor who's on commercials, and he's like, five commercials on there, you know? So I wanted to make sure that I get to that sweet spot, and I'm like, okay, I've accomplished this. So now let's calculate the, the pros and the cons of staying. One of the major cons for me was that commercials don't have credits. If somebody doesn't know you, what's up, Bonile? They'll never know it was you on the commercial. And I really wanted my name to be known. And at the time, I even had a different name, being sent to Kamalam Lava Vincent. And that was a symbolical change for me. You know, there's like three major reasons as to why I changed the Kamalam. And then most people are like, why? Why did you change your name? It was Azul Vincent. I'm like, well, symbolically, Vincent was the model me. He was the commercials me. Usandi Le, Sandi Lumashangu is the actor. This is now, I want to be known as Usandi Lumashangu. Working at BOM is frightening. And I think that's a good thing because then I will always make sure that I'm on my toes. Working, at, working for people that big, you think, I cannot disappoint. I cannot disappoint myself. I cannot disappoint the people that are now rooting for me back home because now I've opened myself up to this, you know, I've, you know and just I need to assume the position of, of a person who can take it as far as he can. There's no slacking from here on out, you know. If you're very persistent in something, it grows exponentially. Like if you really firmly give your entire self to something, your growth within it will be an exponential growth. I started listening to my intuition a lot. I started listening to myself and I started using my emotions as a compass. And I knew it would say, okay, if I continue with cameos, yes, I'll be, mm -hmm, they'll know me, but that's no way I want to end because I know I'm growing, you know, and so I could see my growth and I'm like, okay, I want to pursue something higher. I'll always challenge myself to go somewhere further, working on myself at the point in time as well. So that all just added on to my, to my, to my progress, I'd like to say, you know, I don't want to take full credit to it. Also God, I mean, God has played a real major role in my, in my, in my career. You know, a lot of support systems played a major role, you know, and they saw that I'm actually really really pursuing something that I really, really love. And people react well to that. They want to help you. They really do. Like, they're like, I see it in you. Like, what do you need? And there's a lot of people that I can give credits to for what I've done, yeah, what I've accomplished.